still want to hear more? I'm coming. Here, it, the lungs are getting filled. <laughs> These guys, you know, I may be a volunteer, but I take this seriously. <laughs> All right, Jeff, you're, you're sitting in the front. Oh, wait, you're already there. So good morning, everybody. Good to see you all. Hi. Welcome to Westside Unitarian Universalist Church, where compassion leads us to work for justice and equality. I'm glad you came today, and it's my hope that you find something here that nourishes your heart, feeds your mind, and grows your spirit. So I'm Darren Cote, and I'm your worship associate this morning. Be you a spiritual seeker, an atheist, or a theist, the West Side is a community of many beliefs, genders, and sexualities. It's a community of diverse cultural, racial, and class backgrounds a community of varied abilities and gifts. Some here find inspiration in the great books, others in the great outdoors, and still others in great conversation. Whoever you may be, all are welcome in our inclusive congregation. So to newcomers and old friends alike, together we say welcome. <laughs> At Westside, we are raising the next generation of Unitarian Universalists, and we want them to know that they are an important part of our community. Several years ago, we chose to be radically inclusive and to adopt a multi-generational worship where our services include all family members. So welcome to all children and youth of all ages. There are a number of announcements in your order of service today. Uh, please take any of them with you that you might need for reminders later in the week or to share with others. I want to call your attention to one of these in particular, which um, my good friend Diane Jones is asked me to point out, that you can become an Arts Goggle volunteer today. Diane, you want to raise your hand, let everyone know who you are? So Diane is a, a looking for volunteers and she's going to be available after the service to help you out if you want to learn how to become one. So thanks, Diane. That's an arts goggle volunteer. There's so many others though, if you just be sure to look through all of the inserts. We've got a ton of stuff going on. Busy community, lovely things happening. For those of you that are joining us online uh, or visiting us for the first time today and you're not already on our mailing list, Please sign up by clicking the link at the bottom of the Westside UU.org website. And for those of you here that are in person with us, we ask you to remind you to please uh, silence your cell phones and any other devices you might have with you today. This morning, our reflection will be given by our Minister Emeritus, the Reverend Dr. Russell Elevin. Though today's will be his last in-person reflection for a while, he will be back providing a remote reflection in October. We will miss you, Russell. Russell's reflection today is going to be a good one. It's about made-up religions. <laughs> and he is going to share and introduce you to three of his favorites this Sunday morning. So I invite you now to take a deep breath, be sure to let it out, and from wherever you are, settle into this sacred space we create and let us worship together as we listen to this morning's prelude, Shower the People, by James Taylor, performed by our own West Side Band. You can play the game, you can act out the part, though you know it wasn't written for you. Tell me, how can you stand there with your broken heart, ashamed of playing the fool? 
one thing can lead to another. It doesn't take any sacrifice. Oh, father, mother, sister, and brother, if it feels nice, don't you think twice. Just shower the people you love with love. Show them the way that you You cannot hide. Well, this is widely known. And what you plan to do with your foolish pride when you're all by yourself alone? Once you tell somebody the way that you feel, you can feel it beginning to ease. I think it's true what they say about this squeaky wheel. She's always getting the grace. It's better to shower, shower the people you love with love. Yes, and show them the way that you feel. got goose pimples. Woo! <laughs> thank you guys. We all thank you. I'm loving this West Side Band and I'm loving the support. Whew. So our opening words today are from The Power of Myth by Joseph Campbell. People say that what we're all seeking and it's the meaning of life. I don't really think that's what we're seeking. I think what we're seeking is the experience of being alive so that our life experiences on the purely physical plane will have resonance with our own innermost being and, and our own reality so that we can actually feel the rapture of being alive. As do many Unitarian Universalist congregations, we'll begin our time this morning with the lighting of a chalice. I invite Austin Cosby to come forward and light our chalice this morning. The chalice is a symbol of our Unitarian Universalist faith and represents the Unitarian Universalist Association, or UUA. The flaming chalice symbolizes the heritage of our past, the warmth of community, 
and the light of hope within this church today. Our chalice lighting words today, which Osby, Austin has been so kind to read, is uh, created in the image of love by Karishma Gottfried. Hi, everyone. Can everyone hear me? Okay. Created in the image of love. Each of us was created in the image of love. Wherever we come from, wherever we're going, whoever we are, whomever we love, we proclaim with love on our side. Our bodies are sacred, our minds are blessed, our spirits are beloved. May we be open to receive more love, always more love. Our opening hymn is number 101, Abide With Me in the Gray Hymnal. Please stand if you are able and so moved and join our song leader, Jennifer Brown. We're gonna sing all three verses. Please remain standing and join me in our affirmation. Love is the doctrine of this church. The quest of truth is its sacrament and service is its prayer. To dwell together in peace, to seek knowledge in freedom, to work for justice through action, to serve others in community, to the end that all souls shall grow into harmony with creation. Thus do we covenant with one another. You may be seated. So please come forward if you are young at heart or would like to have a close up view of our time for all ages presented by our mythic director of radical exploration, Nikki Kennedy. Afterwards, we're going to sing the children back to their seats with the seven principles song that will be in the back of your gray hymnal. Good morning. Y'all, look how full this room is. Y'all can do better than that. Let's try it again. Good morning. Good morning. Now that's, what, that's a West Side welcome. Thank you, guys. Man, look at all you, all these new friends and old friends and smiling friends and silly friends. I'm so excited. Can you, yeah, let's help him get back on this thing. Okay, thank you. Thank you. 
for being here. So I have to admit, I liked last weekend's better than this weekend's weather. I'm just, I don't have a pool, so it's easy for me to say. My air conditioner would agree. But I'm so glad you guys all came. And you're in a sweatshirt. Wow. We are definitely different ages. <laughs> we are definitely different ages. So I want to talk to you guys about stories. Can you guys all do me a favor? I want you guys to all take a deep breath with me. On your own, leave each other alone and breathe out real slow. Good job. So stories. Do you guys ever hear any stories? Yeah? Where are some places you hear stories? Your grandfather? Yeah. Yes, Chloe. Books. Mm, we're a book-loving community here. I love books, too. What about, do you ever hear them in classes here, in your RE classes here? Yeah? Well, the thing about stories is we get to listen to them. Maybe there's a lesson to be learned in the story. Maybe they share about culture and heritage. Maybe they're just something funny people wanted to write or for us to listen to. But I want to talk to you about a specific story today that I think you guys are all going to be familiar with. I heard a story when I was a kid about this girl with blonde hair, and she went on an adventure and went into a house that wasn't hers. Not only what is it a house that wasn't hers, you see they're laughing at me because they already know where I'm going with this. Not only was it not her house, there was three animals that lived in it, an entire family. So maybe some of you have heard of the story of Goldilocks and the Three Bears. If you've ever heard of that story, I want you to raise your hand. Okay, okay. So most of you have heard of that story. So I'm going to re... I'm going to... I'm going to recap it real fast. Goldilocks goes on an adventure. She gets hungry, and she goes into somebody else's house. She tries, yes, she does break things. She tries out furniture and beds and some of their food. So as we think about that story, do bears really live in a house? I mean, could they ever? I mean, not a house that we would live in, right? They don't, they have... They don't have two hands, they don't have thumbs, they walk differently, they smell differently, they itch their backs differently, <laughs> right? There's some other things they do that are differently, but we won't discuss those at church. <laughs> um, so when we think about that story, there's some things that we can really learn from it. One is respect. We want to respect, we want others to respect us, and we in turn want to respect others. We want to respect their privacy, and we want to respect their things. James, if you were going on a family walk, would you just walk into somebody's random house and sit in their furniture and on their chairs and in their beds if their door was unlocked? No, because your parents have taught you respect, well, and safety, but we're going to focus on the respect today. Okay, and, right, safety, right, right. So we should also, in that story, think about how our actions impacts others. Now, I heard you guys immediately say, yeah, she broke things in their house. Well, yeah, she did. Part of her actions impacted them because they didn't have the same beds to sleep in. They didn't get to have their chairs that they loved to sit on as a family. They didn't get to have their porridge that was germ-free anymore because she had messed with it. The other thing that story makes me think of is apologizing. Have any of you ever made a mistake? Now, I don't want to know what it is. I just want to know, have you ever made a mistake? Everyone, Everyone well, that's not for me to judge. That's a personal decision, but yes, <laughs> fair. So when we make a mistake, that's natural, right? We're all going to make mistakes. Y'all, part of learning is making mistakes. Have you ever learned to ride a bike and you fell a few times maybe? Or have you ever, we have some people that like to go rock climbing. I don't know if they're here today but we have people that like to go rock climbing. Did they, you think they climbed 100 feet in five minutes the first time they did it? Heck no, that would be crazy. I mean, it could happen, I guess, but no, that's not how it happens. 
What about if you're a musician? We have so many gifted musicians in our midst today. Some of them are playing, and we're getting to see their talents. Do you think Yuki just all of a sudden woke up one day and said, I'm going to go play um, a beautiful music on this piano? No, it took lots of practice, right? So, okay, so I digress. So the other thing I think that we can talk about is forgiveness. People apologize, and we get to forgive. You know, here we say, I don't know how many of you can see this, but there's this beautiful poster up here, and love is at the center. We say that here. We, need, we work on showing that here in all that we do, young and young at heart and the not so young at heart. We work on showing that every day. And if we truly believe love is at the center, then we need to remember that forgiveness is part of that, right? It's natural. As Matthew pointed out, we've all made mistakes. The last thing I really think about when I think about Goldilocks and the three bears is finding balance. You know, Goldilocks tried three different chairs and three different beds and three different cups of porridge, right? Thank you, Roman. You're exactly right. The first one was too what? Hot. Hot. The second one was too cold, and the third one was just right. So finding a balance is really important. What James likes may not be what I like. James likes tea. Do you like sweetener in your tea? No. James doesn't like sweetener, but Roman does. That's okay, and so does Riley. That's okay. We don't all have to like the same thing, but we get to find a balance. So what's best for you, what's good for you, may not be what's best or what's good for me. But this is a place, you guys, this is a place where we get to come and we get to keep love at the center. We get to learn with each other and we get to learn from each other. We can even learn from fairy tales like Goldilocks and the Three Bears. I hope this week for you continues to be beautiful and amazing, and you learn from each other, and that you remember love really is at the center of what we do. And I hope you guys have a beautiful week. Thank you. I believe in every person's worth and dignity, justice and compassion. Good morning. I'm Jane Hardwick, one of the Pastoral Care Associates at Westside. We make time each week to share pieces of our lives with one another. We do this because each person in this community has value. Each person's experience matters. The Pastoral Care Team is here for you to give a listening ear and reach out to you or someone you think we should know about that is hurting or needs a hospital or home visit. Members of the team can be identified wearing a pastoral care team badge on Sundays. Please submit your joys and concerns to the team by completing one of these forms at the welcome desk, emailing us at pastoralcare at westsideuu.org, or contacting any member of the team. The other current members of our team are Debbie Rake, John Fisher, Brenda McKeon, and Barbara Crotty. Would the members of the team please raise your hands so everybody knows who you are? Okay. We share our concerns with one another today, but today we don't have any concerns that were presented. We also share our joys with one another, knowing that joy comes into all of our lives. 
knowing that together our voices can rise in a chorus of celebration. And again, will you please stand as I read your choice, or raise your hand, either one. We make space each week for musical centering, knowing the lives and experience of every person matters, and together our lights shine brighter. And we will sing our centering song after we listen to our choice. <laughs> this came through an email. Hello. I wanted to share a joy for the service and newsletter. I started attending last month and haven't missed a service. That's because of the friendly, compassionate, and welcoming members of Westside. It, it is life-changing to find a wonderful group of like-minded humans. Bess Scott. Scott, are you here today? Thank you. And from Diane Jones, today I'm proud to be a Unitarian Universalist and proud to be a member of this church. I'm also excited to help us find new tribe members through community involvements. Go Westside. <laughs> and now if you'll join in singing our centering song, and this is Find a Stillness. We're going to sing it one time through. Number 352. Good morning. My name is Diane Austin, and I'm one of the co-leaders of the meditation groups here at Westside. I now invite you to relax your mind and body and join in a time of meditation. I'll begin with an introduction before we move into a minute of silence. Our bell will sound to signal the start of your own meditation prayer or reflection, and it will sound again at the end. Our introduction this morning is In Betweenness by Michelle Legrave. We, you and I, are in between right now, in between what was and what will be, in between who we were and who we will become in between letting go and embracing, in between saying hello and saying goodbye. In betweenness, it's a thing. In betweenness is a time of fullness, a time of anticipation, a time of hope, a time of worry, a time of sadness. In-betweenness is a time of waiting, waiting for news, waiting for departure, waiting for arrival, waiting for death, waiting for life. In-betweenness is a time of transformation, 
a time of reflection, a time of action, a time of growing, a time of becoming. During this time of in-betweenness, of knowing and not knowing, let us enter into the silence together. May it be so, blessed be, and amen. Here at Westside, we practice our UU faith in a variety of ways. One of those ways is by giving 100% of gifts to our weekly collection, unless otherwise designated, to support organizations who carry out our transcendent values of compassion, justice, and equality. Westside's offering for the month of September goes to the Justice Network of Tarrant County. It began as a gathering in February of 2023 that united 20 organizations, most being faith-based, groups. Its purpose is to take action to reduce the structural barriers to a more just, fair, and equitable world for all persons in Tarrant County. Justice action teams are jail and criminal justice reform, LGBTQ plus equality, public education, reducing gun violence, and voting rights. The teams focus on rapid responses to critical issues, consistent responses to chronic policy-driven problems, and education for our members and the public. And last, getting out the vote in 2024. Westside is a Justice Network member. Early actions of the Justice Network have been the jail team's focus on improving the dangerous conditions at the county jail. Jail team and Westside member Reed Bills emphasizes the need to push for jail reform that alleviates overcrowding by ceasing arrests of individuals with mental health issues or minor offenses. Quoting Reed, especially urgent is the need to stop jail deaths which will require a change in the culture and the training of the jail staff from sheriff on down. Reed, Westside members Linda Hanratty and Bob Van, and other Justice Network members have actively participated in commissioner court meetings for over a year, pushing for reform and advocating for families affected by inmate deaths. Please thank these relentless justice seekers when you see them, right over there. 
and ask them how you can support the effort. Let's also support the Justice Network, which is the catalyst for this work by donating today. Please give online if you can through our church's giving page or by using the Vanco mobile app, which you can download from the App Store. Just select the Service Project Fund and add in the name of this month's recipient, the Justice Network of Tarrant County. Or you can just mail us a check to the church at 901 Page Avenue, Fort Worth 76110. We thank you for your contribution today. One last note, if you are giving toward your stewardship pledge, please use the envelopes at the bottom of the bowl as it is passed. So, after all that, let us now enjoy this musical offering of Scarborough Fair, English traditional Fukushima arrangement performed by Yuki. There are some amazing combos in the world. There is Simon and Garfunkel, and there is Yuki and that baby grand piano. <laughs> we thank you so much for putting into practice the spiritual virtue of generosity. Our giving, it connects us to the wider web of the community. And also thank you for keeping your stewardship uh, commitment stewardship commitment current to keep our congregation's important work going. I am going to give over the microphone to Mr. Russell Sullivan. Hey, everybody. You know, I like to start with responsive readings. So let's do one together. It's number 654. And by the way, did we have pancakes again this morning? Why are so many people here? <laughs> Air conditioning. 
654 in your gray hymnal, Impassioned Clay. And thank you, Jennifer, for reading the responses so that our online folks will hear as well. Let's go. Deep in ourselves, there resides the religious impulse. Out of the passions of our clay, it rises. We have religion when we stop deluding ourselves that we are self-sufficient, self-sustaining, or self-derived. We have religion when we hold some hope beyond the present, some self-respect beyond our failures. We have religion when our hearts are capable of leaping up at beauty, when our nerves are edged by some dream in the heart. We have religion when we have an abiding gratitude for all that we have received. We have religion when we look upon people with all their failings and still find in them good. When we look beyond people to the grandeur in nature and to the purpose in our own heart. We have religion when we have done all that we can and then in confidence entrust ourselves to the life that is larger than ourselves. Very good, thank you all very much. Well, hello everybody. It is good to actually, physically be with you here again today live and in person. I've thoroughly enjoyed being here with you all this past week and I hope you're continue to, continuing to do well, and I hope you're enjoying being together today with your West Side community this Sunday morning. Today I'm going to talk with you about made-up religions. There are many, but I'm going to talk about three made-up religions that I have examined more closely than many of the others. Sociologists use the term new religious movement to describe new faiths that have arisen around the world. Wikipedia says that a new religious movement is also known as alternative spirituality or a new religion, and it is a religious or spiritual group that has modern origins and is peripheral to its society's dominant religious culture. Sociologists believe there are thousands of new religious movements worldwide. Most only have a handful of members, but others have many adherents, some more than Unitarian Universalism. Before I begin talking about these made-up religions, I do want to say that it's not my intent to disparage any faith tradition today. I believe everyone has the right to believe in whatever religious ideas they desire or in none at all. I just don't want the beliefs of others forced upon me. Now, last Sunday when I talked about mythology, I mentioned how the ancient Greeks and others were doing their best to make sense of the world and how it works and that our responses to those kinds of questions today would be very different simply because we know more about the world today than they did way back then. Typically, religions help people with their existential questions. Questions like, why am I here? How do I live a good and honorable life? What happens when I die? Questions are important in religion. And sometimes, so are the answers. A young girl asked her mother, where did people come from? Her mother answered, God made Adam and Eve, and they had children. And that's how all of humanity was made. A couple of days later, she asked her father the same question. The father answered, well, many years ago, there were these kind of monkeys from which the human race evolved. The confused little girl returned to her mother and said, Mommy, how is it possible that you told me we were created by God and Daddy said we came from monkeys? The mother said, Well, dear, it's actually very simple. I told you about my side of the family. 
and the father told you about his. The first made-up religion I want to talk about is the Universal Life Church. Have, have any of you heard of ULC, the Universal Life Church? Mm -hmm. It was officially founded in 1962 by the Reverend Kirby Hensley. Hensley was a Baptist minister who started losing his fundamentalist faith. He began to think about church with one very simple precept. Do that which is right. Hensley would leave it up to the individual to determine what do that which is right meant. As the founder of the church, Hensley decided to ordain anyone who had a desire to be a minister. No questions asked, no test of faith required. At first, there was an attempt to plant Universal Life churches all over the world, but Hensley found that difficult to manage and began to focus solely on ordaining people. Today, the vast majority of people the ULC ordains are folks who are officiating a friend's wedding. I recently read that almost 45% of weddings these days are performed by a friend of the people getting married. I was introduced to the Universal Life Church by my major professor at the University of North Texas. D. Barry Lumsden was a man from North Carolina, and the accent he brought with him was syrupy sweet and often made me smile. He was also a rogue of sorts and would say some very outlandish things. So in a class one day, while all of us are gathered, he says, he tells us that he's an ordained minister, and the way he says it, it sounds like a joke. So after class, I ask him about it. He told me I could be ordained, too, by writing a letter to this little church in Modesto, California. He said they'll ordain anybody, even me, he said, referring to himself. Today, mostly because of the Internet, there are 18 million Universal Life Church ministers, including many famous people. All of the Beatles were ULC ministers, for instance. <laughs> And you may remember in the television comedy series called Friends that Joey would get ordained online and officiated the wedding of Monica and Chandler. Before I was ordained at Westside, I followed in my <laughs> academic mentor's footsteps and became a Universal Life Church minister. In fact, I would later officiate my old professor's wedding when he decided to get married again. That one didn't last any longer than the others. <laughs> Hensley's point became that the government had no jurisdiction over how he ran his religion. Court cases were brought, but as of 2016, Universal Life Church ministers are allowed to officiate weddings throughout the United States and the United Kingdom. Now, the second made-up religion I want to talk about is the flying spaghetti monster. <laughs> and I wonder if any of you have heard about this religion. All right, all right. This new religious movement was started in the state of Kansas by Bobby Henderson. Henderson had earned a degree in, phys in physics. And you may remember when Kansas legislators were wanting creationism to be taught alongside evolution and that it should be given the same amount of time and respect. Henderson wrote a sarcastic letter to the Kansas State Board of Education in 2005 saying that his faith tradition, which he called Pastafarianism, <laughs> and which worshipped the flying spaghetti monster, should be given equal time to both evolution and creationism, splitting teaching time into thirds. The flying spaghetti monster, Henderson argued, was actually the creator of our universe, and that creation occurred after a night of heavy drinking by the monster. <laughs> because of the heavy drinking, the earth is flawed, 
and his noodliness, as they addressed the monster, actually planted all the evidence of evolution in order to test the faith of Pastafarians. He also said pirates were the original Pastafarians and that the religion's most holy day is talk like a pirate day, which, as we all know, is fast approaching and occurs this coming Thursday, September 19th. The letter Henderson wrote got out to the public and many Christian conservatives in Kansas and elsewhere were outraged. Others like me and evidently like some of you here today could not stop laughing. <laughs> the Christians told Henderson that he was going to hell for blaspheming the one true God. Henderson said he wasn't worried about that too much. Like other religions that encourage spe special dress to show allegiance to their faith, Pastafarians often wear spaghetti strainers or colanders on their heads to outwardly show their faith to others. Some have pushed their local department of motor vehicles to allow Pastafarians to wear their head covering for their driver's license photo. There have been court cases involved, but some Pastafarians do indeed have their driver's licenses with colanders on their heads. Now there have been some who have argued that Henderson went too far. I've read and heard that he became a little too mocking of Christianity. There were others who did not seem to appreciate the part of the heavenly afterlife for Pastafarians, which included a beer volcano and lots of strippers and prostitutes. Their hell, said Henderson, was very much the same as their heaven. However, in hell, the beer was stale and the sex workers all had sexually transmitted diseases. <laughs> Out of this tumult, there grew, and I kid you not, the Unitarian Church of Pasta, who because of these differences splintered from the original faith. Henderson wrote a book titled The Gospel of the Flying Spaghetti Monster, and from out of the Unitarian Church of Pasta came their holy text titled the New Testament of the Flying Spaghetti Monster, Dinner 2.0. The final made up religion I'll discuss this morning is the Church of the Latter Day Dude, often referred to as Dudism. How many of you know about Dudism? A little? A few? It's my favorite of the made up religions I'm discussing this morning. The religion uses the 1998 film, The Big Lebowski, to give common language to the concepts they hold dear. Just out of curiosity, how many of you have seen the movie, The Big Lebowski? Okay, cool, cool. How many of you have seen it more than five times? <laughs> These are my people. The film has reached cult-like status, and people who are into it love quoting the movie to each other. My buddy Greg and I enjoy littering our conversations or texts with lines from the film. Jeffrey Lebowski, played by Jeff Bridges, is called the dude, or duder, or duderino, if you're not into the whole brevity thing. In the movie, the dude is a pretty mild-mannered guy. He resides in a little bungalow in Venice Beach, California, and is, he is said to be the laziest man in Los Angeles County, which would place him high in the running for laziest worldwide. His pleasures are simple. He enjoys Credence Clearwater Revival. He clearly does not like the Eagles. He takes bubble baths, smokes marijuana, and will accept a white Russian drink just about any time it's offered. He 
tries to mind his own business and doesn't appreciate being pulled into the drama of others. He has a small group of close friends he values highly, even though each friend is very different from the other. Many of life's difficulties, he believes, can be put aside by bowling with his buddies. His life is upended when some ruffians break into his bungalow, mistaking the dude for a supposed millionaire who happened to share the same name of Jeffrey Lebowski. When they figure out this guy is no millionaire, one of the intruders micturates on the dude's rug. And my friends, that rug really tied the room together. <laughs> there are lots of ups and downs, strikes and gutters, and the use of a specific drug regimen that keeps the dude's mind limber enough to eventually figure out what's going on. I'll not tell you any more about the movie in fear of spoiling it for you, because I'm sure many of you will run out of here today, go home, <laughs> and watch this movie. I'll tell you, it is available on Amazon Prime. <laughs> In 2005, an American journalist named Oliver Benjamin, living in Chiang Mai, Thailand, saw the Duder's light and began to formulate the faith. Dudism mashes up a little bit of Taoism, a little bit of Buddhism, a bit of Epicureanism, and a little bit of humanism. But hey, at least it's an ethos. There have been three books penned by Benjamin that explore how to live a Dudist life. And to be ordained as a Dudist priest by the Church of the Latter-day Dude you must have an email address. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> they are so lazy that they'll not respond to postal mail. <laughs> Many ordained Dudas priests lawfully officiate weddings for friends and others while doing their best to take things easy, knowing that life goes on, and that a wiser fellow than myself once said, sometimes you eat the bar, and sometimes, well, the bar eats you. It's really not that funny for people who haven't <laughs> been as deeply into this as I am. <laughs> Typically, like I said earlier, religions help people with existential questions. The Greeks created a religion that did their best with what they knew. The world religions most people recognize today were similarly created and did their best to answer the questions of life. But sometimes religions can be made up for political issues, like the Universal Life Church, for specific societal issues, like Pastafarianism, and sometimes for a little bit of fun, like the Church of the Latter-day Dude. But in my opinion, just like many of yours, I'm sure, my opinion is that all religions are made up. Again, not my intent to denigrate anybody's faith. All religions do their best to help people figure out the world as best they can. What I find disarming <laughs> is when one made-up religion holds itself out to be superior to all other made-up religions, even killing others who do not believe the correct way. I've never heard or read that a dudist murdered another human being for not being a dudist. Yet today, millions of people 
still take great comfort in their religious faith and live their lives trying to adhere to its tenets. I would not begrudge anyone that comfort. But those old stories don't mean as much to me. So I come to a place like Westside, another made-up religion that evolved out of other made-up religions. And where we are still making it up today as we go along. But where the answer to all of our questions is love. I take great comfort in that. And I hope that you do too. As we rise in body or spirit and join together in the singing of our closing hymn number 292, if I can stop one heart from breaking. There's only one verse, but we're going to sing it through two times. Good job, everybody. That was a tough one. <laughs> so our closing words today, I promise I didn't know what the made-up religions were. I just took a guess. Our closing words today are a prayer by the Church of the Flying Spaghetti Monster. <laughs> thy noodle come, thy sauce be yum, on top some grated Parmesan. Give us this day our garlic bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trample on our lawns. And lead us not into vegetarianism, but deliver us some pizza. For thine is the meatball, the noodle, and the sauce. Forever and ever, ramen. The chalice is now extinguished, but its light lives on in the minds and hearts and souls of each one of you. Carry that flame with you as you leave this place and share it with those that you know, with those you love, and most especially for those you have yet to meet. And please, join me now in our congregational closing. Go in peace, seeking justice. Go in peace committed to equal rights and opportunities for all. Go in the peace that is created when together we build communities of true solidarity, deep compassion, and fierce, unrelenting love. Go in peace. May it be so, blessed be, and amen. Thank you.